thanks for having me everyone. It's, it's great to be here, um, particularly looking forward to the feedback. Um, <laughs> particularly looking forward to the uh, other speakers after me. I get to just relax after this, which is quite nice. Um, my talk is going to be very robot-centric. Uh, that's thanks to what Rokos does, which is, um, is really trying to solve a problem that the industry has right now with adoption of robotics. So there's been amazing research for many decades now into robotics and mechatronics generally. And um, one of the issues, though, is that the uptake in the enterprise is still quite low. And one of the reasons for that is because making the jump between having something which works in the lab and works productively, effectively, reliably in business or the enterprise or industry um, is still a bridge that needs to be crossed. And Rokos provides a platform that helps bridge that gap uh, by providing a way to allow customers to integrate fleets of robots, the things they do, into their business processes. I'm going to start by going, ah, uh, we are at the dawn of the golden age of robotics. And this next video that I'm going to show just outlines some of the uh, customers that we work with, some of our partners, and just gives us a little sense of inspiration for where robotics is today. <laughs> Who said that? That's a New Zealand robot. Now, there's some amazing robots on there. There's different form factors. Um, there's, <coughs> there's submarines uh, surveying the ocean floor. There's boats doing hydrography. There are fixed arms helping people pack boxes. Um, there's autonomous trucks doing container yard orchestration where they can move shipping containers around in yards full of 4,000 shipping containers, back them up to warehouses completely autonomously, no human intervention. Um, but at the end there, you saw quite a big few seconds of that video dedicated to Boston Dynamics Spot, um, who are a development partner of ours. We've had them uh, since around April last year, we took delivery of a couple of spots. Um, one's down country doing some making a living. Um, the other one, though, I meant to bring here tonight, uh, and I'd always planned to, uh, but sadly, I have to tell a little story about why spot's not here. So just quickly, we're going to look at some of spot's holiday snaps, because we really wanted spot to have a full Kiwi experience. Um, this is spot checking out some Kiwi fruit orchards. This is where Spot became famous in New Zealand for standing next to some sheep and being accused of being a sheep herding dog. This is Spot bungee jumping. <laughs> Unfortunately though, when Spot tried his hand at rugby, he uh, popped an ACL and uh, can't operate his rear leg anymore. You can see this little bandage here, uh, a robotics um, characteristic bandage with a little hazard tape. Uh, so bot spots are uh, being shipped off to get repaired back in Boston before we get it back. Um, having said all of that, I want you to meet Stretch. Stretch is behind me, pretending to be a coat rack. This is actually one of my favorite little robots because it's diminutive. It's designed to work alongside people. Spot's an industrial machine, whereas this is more like a cobot. This is something which can do scanning of arbitrary shelves in warehouse facilities. It can do things like go up and down lanes inside big data centers checking that there's no red lights that they need to attend to, which, believe it or not, still a thing. Even in the most you know, advanced data centers, there's still a manual inspection task required for humans to walk up and down and do the most boring job you can imagine looking for faults in hardware. So they're looking at ways to automate that, and spots, um, stretch is a great uh, kind of form factor for those sorts of applications. For us in Rokos, um, we see... Nice, nice soundtrack, Zane. That was good. I didn't notice that before. So this is our interface. This is our 3D operations view. So this is stretch moving on the right. Telemetry from stretch is being bound to this 3D representation on the left, 
which is one of the things that we do to provide context to operators working with robots in the field. Uh, so I just wanted to present Stretch. It's a, it's a, it's a lovely little robot, probably a little bit, um, what's the word? He's, he, he's a bit slow, but uh, he also gets teased a bit compared to the sort of dog form factor, which is all amazing and cool. But I really like Stretch. But we're here today to actually talk about something a bit more grand uh, than this robot. You can probably see if you can move him back slowly, zone, if I can get past. Um, we're here to talk about automation primarily, and why are we talking about that, and what's the theme, how does that relate to the theme of this whole talk? Well, this quote probably sums it up. Apparently, the positive productivity shock of automation will generate up to $2 trillion for the Australian economy over the next 15 years. So even if they're wrong um, you know, by half, that's still a heap of value that the concept of automation is providing to industry. Um, when we think about this, I want to show you the actual example of a mission being executed for a business. Um, and, and we can talk a bit more about the technology that underpins it, because it's tech week after all, uh, not business week. Um, and go from there and sort of what we think the, the future of Industry 4.0 looks like. Ah, before I do that, I want to tell you the story of digital transformation, which is um, how companies are starting to understand the requirement for physical automation. So for decades now, people have been working on digital transformation. They've been doing all these things, desktop automation, business process automation, RPA, robotic process automation. Um, it's a bummer they use robot, because obviously it's not. Uh, but, you know, automating business process digitally has seen a huge amount of investment and a huge amount of value created. Above that, you've got your machine learning decision engines, which start to really extend into the physical automation concept. And so where we see it is that <coughs> this digital transformation arc is starting to land in the world of physical automation. You imagine that the most sophisticated sensor platforms available today, so robots, are really the interface between the physical and the digital world. So even if your robot's sole purpose is just to collect data for a company, that is still a heap of value just there. We move on and you look at how AI applies to it and you start to see this, this whole progression through industrial um, automation right through to where we are now combining the world of the digital uh, with the physical through robotics. Uh, and as promised, this is, I think, the uh, actual mission being executed to show a process being automated using a robot and that interface with the digital. This is our portal being used to execute a mission remotely. So this can be executed from anywhere in the world using Spot to execute a very, very specific and valuable use case. So through gauge reading, uh, being able to manoeuvre, to look at the right thing, Oops, something's died. <laughs> it's not my laptop, thankfully. Seems to be this thing. Oh, it's back. Awesome. Let me fast forward us a little bit. Oh, yeah. Other use cases are <coughs> detecting that things like barricades are in the right place, they haven't been removed by a worker accidentally, so therefore enforcing health and, health and safety concerns. This one I love, this is Spot telling someone off for not wearing their helmet. Poor guy, he's been bossed around by a robot. Seems okay with it. And this one, again, as I was saying, looking at those breakers to see if they're open or closed is 
something which currently they have to task humans to in very weird and wonderful places where it's actually really expensive just to get the human personnel there, let alone the effectiveness of being able to move that digital information straight up somewhere else for analysis. Uh, so, if you look at that, you think, okay, so where's the technology and how does technology play into this? And so, these are what we call the automation fundamentals. Um, and these are things that we've built as part of our platform, uh, but generally, when you think about how you need, what you need to do to execute anything like this in the wild with robots in an effective way, you have to think about these things. So, connect, monitor, and control robots. and some primitives. So you need to be able to get telemetry streamed off the robot. You need to be able to do that fast, effectively, anywhere in the world, over cruddy internet connections. Um, even with the best Wi-Fi network in the world, if you're working in a container yard, those big containers are like Faraday cages. You go behind it, network goes. So how do you effectively get telemetry from the robots in a reliable way, uh, which is consistent enough to then make operational decisions as you see it, but also to then uh, execute some business logic based on what's coming off the robot. You need messages going the other way, so you need to be able to task the robot, tell it what to do, uh, and generally control them. And you get to some really hardcore stuff that you have to pull off. So in order to provide situational awareness for an operator, you need to be able to effectively stream what the robot can see. And what the robot, how the robot interprets its world is often really, really heavyweight 3D point cloud data. And so uh, this um, slide just talks about some of the challenges just with that. Um, and Baden, who's in the audience uh, over there, uh, who heads up our R&D at Rokos, this has been his baby for quite some time. I think your only input was some open source and a bunch of papers that you had to digest. But but the outcome is that we can effectively stream point cloud data um, as, and have it show up at the other end in voxels in a web interface from anywhere in the world. And it does even more clever things like manipulates what the robot's sending based on the perspective of the camera in 3D space so that it only sends what the user actually needs in order to get that operator awareness. Pretty, pretty full on. And later, I think um, one of the, uh, some of the talks after uh, me, we're going to talk about digital twins. This is a little glimpse of that because once you can stream state condition monitoring data from a 3D environment into a model in the cloud or somewhere else, you start to build up this concept of a digital twin. So where does this all go? So at the bottom, we've got our fundamental building blocks, which are the things I was just talking about. Those are sort of Lego blocks or primitives, I suppose, for pulling off any kind of operation like this. Above that, you get higher order stuff like teleoperation, um, events, so you can do things reactively to stuff that's happening in the field on the robots, the spatial data streaming, as I was talking about. But above that is this whole concept of autonomy. You, you thread all of this together, you have a visual interface for being able to create missions for robots. Um, and through that, and an integration with AI and ML, as you start to be able to automate vast business processes using fleets of robots in the field effectively. So our vision um, and the thing that we, um, you know, is, is one significant goal for us is to be the autonomy platform for industry. We want to be able to orchestrate robotics across the enterprise. Uh, we want to bridge that gap between traditional industrial equipment, um, autonomous mobile robots, IoT, and AI and ML, um, one of the problems with productionizing AI is getting the data to the right place at the right time uh, in order to make an effective decision at the right time. And so if you can thread all of these together, you start to get this really high order value proposition uh, for industry. And when you think about the theme of this talk, which is about optimizing uh, performance uh, for business or for enterprise or industry, that's what we're really talking about. This is my last slide, um, and it's the one uh, which I want to leave you with, which is if you take these three fundamentals down the bottom, which is traditional industrial automation, so as an example, we've been working with uh, people who make PLCs, running our agent on it, the thing that usually runs on a robot, so that we can integrate the operations of traditional mechanical industrial equipment with the world of mobile autonomous robots. 
um, if you can do that, if you can also bring in data from your IoT sensor networks, having you know, industry just been through years of implementing and rolling out IoT sensor platforms, and the third missing piece is the robot operations block, put all that together with AI and machine learning and an autonomy platform for industry which wraps it all together, you get extremely enhanced organisational performance. We're imagining now uh, companies which can run entire physical automation processes uh, autom autonomously, automatically, um, and can make decisions themselves in real time to make the right decisions uh, for industry. And that's, that's all I have today.